Uh, did you catch this story? It was announced yesterday the NHS has now confirmed that it's banned puberty blockers for children. Good is what I say. I would even question why on earth this was approved to be allowed to be given in the first place. Um, sometimes I do wonder what on earth uh, our country is coming to. Anyway, uh, Miriam Cates, she was speaking out about this earlier on today. Let's have a listen. Really pleased uh, with this decision to stop prescribing puberty blockers on the NHS. We've got to this point now where uh, it's a very sensible position. But I would say that it isn't, although it's going to be illegal for the NHS to prescribe uh, these drugs, they are available privately online and in private clinics. Well, there you go. And I've got to say, this decision from yesterday only applies uh, in England. Um, and as you're just hearing then, you can still get these uh, medications on, uh, the, well, within the private sector and also uh, in places like Scotland. Alex Dean, your thoughts on this one? Um, I don't think that we should give life-changing medical treatments to uh, children like this. Uh, you should give treatment to children, of course, to make them better, but that's not what this does. It assists you in supposedly changing, changing your gender, which isn't actually possible. Um, and what happens to children as a result of this is that they go on very often unable to have children themselves, uh, unable, uh, having their own sex lives uh, interfered with quite significantly. And the point is that whilst adults might freely choose, preferably, by the way, with their own money rather than the state's money, adults might freely choose to do something to their bodies. Children should not be able to because we recognise in law that children are bad decision makers. We don't let children choose to smoke or drink or even leave school whenever uh, they want. We don't allow children to decide their own bedtimes. So why should children be able to take life-altering uh, amounts of medical uh, treatment because they feel different in a certain period of time? Indeed, Nigel. Um, I'm in favour of this on the basis that uh, what, what the advice was, the medical advice, was that, the, that uh, there's no evidence that these are safe um, and also um, no evidence that they, that they um, are clinically the right thing to do. So I'm prepared to go along with uh, medical opinion on this. And if they're saying there is a question mark over whether or not they will harm children, I'm not convinced they will, by the way, but if there's a question mark over it, I'd prefer to take the advice of doctors than anybody else on this one. Yeah, and I've got to say, there's been a lot of pushback from people uh, that do think that these children should be getting um, these blockers because uh, I've seen a lot of it, uh, people coming out and saying that the people that are in favour are saying these are safe, um, they are basically, um, you know, they don't cause harm, uh, they don't cause lasting damage, and they actually think that it's going to cause more damage to the children that are gender confused um, to actually allow their bodies to develop and they would actually say this is a very cruel policy, inhumane policy and they would encourage people to be trying to fight this policy. Well, Stonewall, for instance, has come out today against this. That they're, they're, that that's what they're saying. And uh, that, that may be true. The point I'm making is that if you get medical advice that this is not a good idea because we don't know enough about it, um, I think that at that stage you follow the medical advice. Uh, as Miriam oh. Case pointed out, there's nothing to stop you going privately. If you're determined to go and do it, you, can, you could go privately. Um, when it comes down to what children should and shouldn't do, I don't think you put age limits on whether a child might want to change gender. Uh, what you do is you, you deal with the individual circumstances of that child. Do you could conceive of a child deciding to change gender at four? No, I'm not, I'm not putting, a, putting an age limit that's on it. That's my because, point. Why because not? Because that's, that, 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 that's where we, we get into difficulties. Is four the right age? Probably not. Is 15 the right age or should it be 16? You get into an, into an area where it becomes difficult. If you talk to teachers who go through this... I mean, schools have been dealing with this for years. Sure. And they've been dealing with it quietly and they seem to find that they can get on with it quite well. I think there is room for agreement between us, uh, to this extent at least, which is that... When faced with the state saying, because there is inadequate or no evidence that this is safe, we're going to suspend it. In my view, the correct response from organisations like Stonewall, we can argue whether it's right they've been captured by this uh, interest group or not, but anyway, when an organisation like Stonewall disagrees with it, to my mind, their response should be, here is our reasoned evidential case for why you're wrong, and we will seek to campaign to have the law changed in our favour. Instead, the response you get, certainly from the online warriors, is various kinds of bigots, transphobe, mm. you're, you're wrong, you, 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 you hate people, you want them to die. No reason, no attempt to turn the case around, no attempt to say the decision has not gone on our way. Our role is to try and change people's minds and convince them that we are right. Mm, there you go. I'm, I'll come back to this in a sec. But for now, Nigel Farage is up at 7 o'clock. Nigel, good evening to you. I'm not hearing the programme. Could we get programming, Nigel? 
Nigel, can you hear me? No, he cannot. I saw him, though, looking very uh, handsome and raring to go. You can catch him at 7 o'clock tonight. You, you see, I'm a mom to a young one, and this um, kind of whole notion that uh, children are being told or encouraged to believe or supported to believe that they can change their sex is something which really concerns me because my um, biological son cannot suddenly become a biological girl or woman just because he feels like he's been born in the wrong body. And there's something about this. Like, if a child came to an adult and said, for example, um, you know, I feel like I'm really overweight and they were starving themselves and they were on the cusp of anorexia, a sensible adult wouldn't be going, oh, yeah, you're really fat, let's reduce your, your weight. If a child came to an adult and said, you know, I'm really depressed and I don't want to live, a sensible adult wouldn't be saying, oh, you know, well, let me help you end your life, and so on or so forth. So, but there's something about this notion that when a child goes to a sensible adult and says, you know, I don't think, mummy, I don't think I'm a, a boy, I think I'm a girl, all of a sudden, these adults start indulging this and saying, well, maybe you are in the wrong body. Let's give you this uh, treatment. Let's give you that treatment. Let's put you on this pathway. It's absurd to me and very danger dangerous and has the potential to absolutely catastrophically end life. And it's based on a fallacy. You cannot change your biological sex. You're absolutely right. You can't change your biological sex, but you can change your gender. Um, and that applies to people under the age of 18 as it applies to people over the age of 18. Usually, that it, it schools which are the first places where, if we're talking about children, that they come across it. So uh, it may be the finest, the best result to come out of it would be a child saying, um, "I want to change my gender," and talking to their parents. That is the best possible outcome. The second best outcome is the child who is who is not sure they can talk to their parents, uh, but they'll talk to their teacher and ask their teacher to talk to their parents. Well, speaking. The worst outcome is the teacher suddenly being faced with looking for uh, a bed that night for a child who's been chucked out of home because of this uh, and is then going around trying to get social services or a church group to provide that bed. That's where the worst outcome comes. So yeah, but I it's think not about encouraging but people. I, yeah, but I think that so many parents are put into this cleft position where they're told, oh, if you don't indulge this in your child, your child might end up, you know, going down to a, a route of suicidal thoughts or whatever. And then it terrifies the parents. And I just... I, I'm not comfortable with that idea either. You mentioned schools, though, and something caught my eye that I thought was very interesting today. There's a school in Wales, uh, and it's, it's held a puberty party, their words, not mine, a puberty party for their year eight pupils, so we're talking 12 and 13-year-olds, and it's all about basically celebrating their journey from yeah. childhood to adulthood, of course, I've contacted the school in question and asked them about this. They said that they're acting on advice from external agencies. Well, of course, I went back and uh, asked, who are these external agencies? And I've yet to receive a reply. I sent that request last night. Uh, where are you on these puberty parties well, for children? First of all, let's keep this in proportion. Uh, puberty party is far less harmful than giving children life-changing amounts of medicine to try to change uh, their gender. So, you know, it falls into the bracket of, um, OK, if you want to, or else I wouldn't do it myself, rather than that's terrible and I think the state should intervene. But the reason that I disagree with it, on balance, I'm not, I'm not losing... I'm not saying it's as bad as the kinds of things we've just been discussing. But the reason I'm against it on balance is that, on reflection, one realises and thinks children arrive at puberty at different points. Mm. Some people hit puberty at 11. Some people hit it a good deal later. And it seems to me... And some people are even earlier than 11. And it seems to me that imposing a one-size-fits-all party on it for some kids who are going to be um, very far down the track and some kids who really will feel that this is not for them yet and, uh, and accentuate the fact they're not part of that group that are going through puberty feels to me like a bad idea. But, that's, but that strikes me as the point of it. Um, <coughs> you're absolutely right. It could well be that you'll have, have uh, kids there... Uh, who are going through different stages, haven't started, some some finishing. Um, the fact that they can act, they can talk about it between them, share that information. The ones who haven't started, asking the asking the ones who have, what is it like? What to expect? What should I worry but about? Why don't you, talk, why don't you talk to your mates about? You talk to your mates about that at school. You wouldn't need to attend a and this is the quote a puberty party. Well, we don't know how the, what, what the even the head teacher says. So I'm not quite sure that the word party was the right was the right one. Well, it's their words. Not yeah. mine. That is a direct the, quote, and I've. I've uh, that's right. No, it screen. is. Yeah. yeah, yeah but, but, the, but, the, but the head says I'm not sure that, 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 that she's not sure that was the right thing to do. So we don't know quite what a puberty party looks like. But the, so the trouble is that whatever you, how you dress it up. Um, 
having the event, let's just say event, yeah. uh, having an event is a defined point in time, whereas puberty is a process. And there are going to be some people who reach the defined point in time as... Uh, as designated by their school, who have who are, feel way behind their cohort. We don't know it's a one-off event. There, <laughs> there, there could be other events. There could be uh, things the teachers are doing to talk the kids through uh, what to expect, yeah, or what they're going through. That is what happens in your personal sexual education classes and so forth. That's what happens in the course of a process over time where you teach people. Rather than say, setting a date and saying, this is the... A puberty party and I can guarantee you there'll be some people who will be it's not it's not just a nice pleasant process that as you describe it some children well, it's not are, that, well, some we, people we've all been through some it children it's not a nice are, process some children are, are, are mean to one another and if you are if you haven't really developed in puberty by the time of your puberty party you will be mocked but, by that, some but, of that's, peers. but that's why it's that why the school is the right place to do something like this for that very reason that um, you've got teachers around to make sure people aren't mean to each other and the fact that they will actually they, that the kids will talk about it amongst each other that must be better uh, than suffering alone. Well, there you go. You can have the final say on that. I've got to say, uh, the head teacher basically celebrates this, says it's all about helping uh, kids uh, understand how to take care of themselves, do things that feel good, ask questions, talk about what's happening, uh, and get support, etc., with their mental health. They do say they've had a, quite a kickback uh, on social media about this, so I've deliberately removed the name of the school uh, just for that reason, really. Uh, they say it's concerning that many of people who've commented on social media seem to have misunderstood what is meant by the term. Puberty. Well, I've got to say, I completely understand what is meant by the term puberty, but I do think there's something a little bit odd about all these external agencies suddenly getting involved. Who are these external agencies? Um, what are all of their agendas? They're just taken in part. You can pick all these things, just one little isolated incident, and sure enough, it's harmless. But when you start piecing things together, I do wonder um, what actually goes on in all of these schools these days and whether or not it's moving in the right direction. You, I'm sure, will have the final say on that. GBviews at gbnews.com is how you can get hold of me tonight. I'll be bringing you into the conversation after the break. Uh, but I also want to ask you, should foreign governments be banned from earning UK media? Your thoughts. I'll see you in two.